Hey guys, welcome back to Caligula's Classroom. This week we're going to be talking about citizenship and immigration. We're also going to be looking at non-citizens and how they can become citizens as well. And the responsibilities and requirements of what it means to actually be a United States citizen. So follow along as we break down this hot topic of American civics. Let's go. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is where immigrants originally came from. We all know that America is a nation of immigrants and that everybody living in America is either an immigrant or has descendants that came from an immigrant country. Now the first immigrants to this country actually came from Asia about 16,000 years ago. They crossed over the land bridge from Asia into Alaska. Then after them came the Celts in the 500s and then the Vikings in the uh, 1000 AD. Now, the first people to actually write about this you know, new world uh, were the Spanish and then came the rest of the conquering Europeans like the French, the English, and the Dutch. And then wave after wave of immigration lasted through the history of the United States, most notably with the Irish in the 1840s, the Chinese in the 1850s, and finally the southern eastern European influx of Jews and Catholics from countries like Italy, Poland, Russia, and um, what's in, uh, the Balkan area. Now in the last 50 years, the most immigration has come from neighboring countries in North America, most notably Mexico, with uh, one quarter of the total immigrant population uh, of 47 million being from Mexico. So there are two theories of immigration in the United States that can be described in two silly, delicious ways. The first is a melting pot, similar because in a melting pot, of ingredients to make, let's say, chocolate, America also has a lot of these ingredients, these being heritages and ethnicities and cultures to spice up what it means to be American. Sure, we all may be different, but when you take a bite out of this, you know, chocolate America, we don't taste the individual ingredients, we taste the finished American product. And on the opposite side, we have a fruit salad approach, which in this case means that the bowl that holds the salad is America and that the different pieces of fruit represent the different cultures and ethnicities that are heterogeneous, which means that we all taste them different. For example, a watermelon does not taste the same as a kiwi, and similar to that fact that being Irish is definitely not the same as being Japanese. Despite our different tastes, however, we are still a delicious and healthy meal. So the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to look at these two different types of non-citizens that come to the United States. The U.S. limits the amount of people that can come to the United States to about 650,000 people per year. So we are a bit selective of who we allow into the country, generally giving preference to those with family already residing in the United States. The first group of people we're going to talk about are aliens or temporary residents. These are people who come to the United States looking for work or they go to school or they're just visiting. They have either passports or work visas or student visas that permit them to hold jobs and pay taxes similar to United States citizens, but can't vote or run for public office. So in review, just think of E.T., he, like aliens, eventually go home. The second group we're going to talk about are immigrants. These are people that are permanent residents in, a, in the country, and they came to our country seeking a new country for work or school, or they're fleeing from a corrupt government or war making them refugees. Immigrants need something called a green card, which is a permanent residency card, and are usually received for employment or petition through the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and also known as USCIS. When immigrants begin their new life, they also pay taxes, hold jobs, and their kids attend schooling. They also cannot vote or run for political office until they become naturalized citizens of the United States. Before I continue, let me just begin to say that this only applies to legal immigrants and aliens and not illegals. Not everyone who is an alien or immigrant is illegal because if they have proper documentation such as a passport or a visa or a green card, that gives them that legal status. So one of the last things we're going to be discussing is citizenship. and There are two ways to become a citizen of the United States, which is natural born citizens and naturalized citizens. To become a natural-born citizen, you have to be born in the USA. Cute Springsteen music. Uh, which means you have to be born in any of the 50 states or U.S. territories. Um, another way is to have at least one natural-born parent. You can be born outside the United States, but as long as one of your parents are a natural-born citizen, you are as well. And finally, you uh, could be born on a U.S. military base, kind of like U.S. men's national team players uh, Fabian Johnson and John Brooks were both born in U, uh, United States bases in Germany. So thanks for that. 
Uh, natural born citizens hold their citizenship forever and become, can become dual citizens of another country if they so choose. Now naturalized citizens are people who immigrate here and follow a six step process to become a citizen. The first step is signing a declaration of intention which means that you are committing to this new citizenship. Uh, the second step is living in the United States for five years and three years if you want to marry somebody in the United States, which is a lot of step, uh, which is a step a lot of people do to gain their citizenship uh, uh, quicker. The third step is to apply for citizenship online, which can be found at the USCIS uh, website. Uh, the next step is to actually have an interview with a USCIS official to make sure that you're a person uh, of good moral character and you know aren't going to be a terrorist to the country. Uh, the fifth step is taking the test, which is a 10-question uh, test about United States government and history, and it pretty much proves if you not only know stuff about our country, but you can read, write, and uh, speak correct English, which a lot of our U.S. citizens today probably would fail uh, pretty miserably. Uh, the sixth step and final step is swearing an oath of allegiance to the Constitution, and voila, cue the music, you are an American citizen. Congratulations. The only thing you can't do is uh, become president. I know, heartbreaking, right? Um, you can lose your citizenship, however, through something called expatriation, which kind of sounds like expatriate. So, I mean, yeah, it's cool. And the last thing we're going to talk about is civic duties and responsibilities. Now, being an American citizen, you know, you have some duties that you have to fulfill, things that if you don't do, you go to jail. Uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is obviously obeying laws. You know, you have to obey laws. If not, you go to jail or you have to pay a fine. Uh, something else, you have to pay taxes. Everyone pays taxes. If you don't pay taxes, you go to jail. Ask Wesley Snipes. The next thing that things we have to do are stuff like go to school, serve on a jury. If you're subpoenaed to court as a witness, you have to do that as well. And finally, filling out your draft card. Okay, if you don't fill out your draft card, you can definitely go to jail. Muhammad Ali in the 60s, he was a big celebrity at the time. He didn't fill out his draft card. He served in jail and was stripped of the heavyweight title. Now, there are things that we should do, but we won't go to jail if we don't do them. These are called civic responsibilities. I'm talking about things like voting and volunteering, you know, things that would make you a good citizen, but you're not going to get thrown in jail if you don't do it. Uh, because if we did throw people in jail for not voting, there would have been a lot more people in jail in this past midterm elections. So, but that's it. Uh, that's all we got for today's uh, Colicchio's Classroom. So thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next week.